Hello everyone, welcome to Friday, January 8th, 2021. That's right, it's the 8th. Uh, how do we do on the 7th when it comes to college basketball? I don't know. How's 22 and 3 look? <laughs> it's pretty freaking good, that's what it looks like. Yep, that's a lot of winning. That's a lot of green right there. That's right, we lost Northern Colorado at home. We lost Hafstra at home. We lost SMU against Cincinnati at home. Other than that, we won everything else. So what does that mean? There's a bunch of different lines here. Ken, what did you do? The answer is I did drive to West Virginia today. I got out of Dodge. Once again, I'm continuing to try to get as far away from Washington, D.C. as possible. So I did go and I made some round robin bets. I bet $160 today, and I made 10 separate picks. I did two different five-team round robins. Here's one of my tickets. I had uh, Northern Arizona, Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Illinois plus four, Tennessee State, and Northwestern State plus six and a half. Uh, I'll go back to that list show you what that looked like in a second. I went three and two, and I lost money on this ticket. So I lost almost 60 bucks, $57, because they didn't cover here. And Northern Arizona, I chose them instead of Idaho State because Idaho State was the pick of the day, and I, I thought I'm going to lose the pick of the day game because of what's been going on. I want to take it both ways. And so I took both sides of it, and you'll see what I did. So this did not work out. This lost 70%. What about my other ticket? Oh, this one worked out really well. I took Idaho State plus two and a half against Northern Arizona in this game as the opposite side, what the algorithm said. I took Eastern Illinois on the money line because the algorithm said to do that. The algorithm said Eastern Illinois was right down here after the home bump and they would barely win this game. And sure enough, they barely won that game, 74-68 at barely, or more than barely. So I took them plus 155. I took UCLA, who just won, it, won the end of the night. Washington State, USC plus four. USC won this game, by the way. USC also won that game. Southern California. They won this game. Lots and lots of winning down here by spread. I mean, this is really, really good. I'll 10 and 1 on the spread. Yikes. How about that? That is Phenomenal down here. That's really good. Including our away teams, which means our home bump of 9% is working just fine right now. So that's a crushing day. As you can see, I walk away with a 800% payout here. I bet 160. I end up with 741 plus 22. I end up with $763, $62 off of 160. I'm, I'm, you know, there you go. That's how you do it. So good for us. Um, algorithm did well today. Spreads and projections. Oh yeah, somebody asked me, Ken, this 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 grid, this whole thing we're looking at, it's too complicated. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what's what to do. It's tough to read. And the answer is yes, yes, it is very tough to read, but it's also supplying a lot of information. So what you should know from the most basic aspect of looking at this is this team over here being the team of reference is supposedly being programmed to win the game. That's what we're looking for. We're caring about teams winning games. As you can see, we're 22-3 and three today. Now, Vegas also had a fantastic day. If you look at all of these lines and we sort them descending by line, uh, or ascending by money line, you'll see what Vegas thought. Vegas also had a fantastic day of 22-3. and three. You know, it wasn't that different. Um, is there anything here that told us to stay away from these games? The margins were okay. I mean, we, I mean, there was it was a pretty even day. We had Northern Colorado way down here at only a six percent margin, but it was a fairly equivalent day. So it was a good day for basically everybody, Vegas and the algorithm. But this down here is really something fantastic. I mean, I don't know if Vegas covers those lines, and I'm not going to try to figure it out now. So questions about this whole thing being confusing, and I understand because we have projected scores and they're not working well yet. I'm still doing work on it. I, I, I put something here so that we can look at something that's trying to be formula driven, but it definitely has a ton of holes in it, and I'm not going to say that it's working great because it's not. So that's why you can almost ignore this. You definitely want to look at the margin more. That, that matters. The margin, the order, the margin matters still. 
this stuff is a work in progress. So that's the best way I can explain it to you. That being said, five minutes in, let's talk about Friday. So lots and lots of games because that's what college basketball is. It's tons and tons of games all the time. Well, what do we have? Let's take a look. First of all, teams that don't have a lot of games. Twos and threes and even fours, I'd consider removing the fours, but we'll leave them in for now. Twos and threes are coming out. It's just not enough activity for the algorithm to be working correctly. So I'm removing those games out. Now, we're looking for money lines and we're trying to find money lines that are good at the top of this list. Let's see if we find any. And we also like home teams. Well, here's a minus 148 for Quinnipiac at home against Manhattan. Four and five games, so not a lot of action between these two teams, but we still like Quinnipiac at home. So that's an interesting line right there. North Texas minus 275, but they're on the road. 25. Here's a 161 with Toledo at home against Ohio. Predicts a tie game. Mm, Toledo is favored because they're at home. Lots of games here. It's a pretty good line, but I'm kind of scared. Ohio is still a good, you know, they're still Ohio, right? Here we see our first underdog of the game at a 10% lead because of the 9% bump. So they're still favored to win Missouri at Kansas City against South Dakota. Don't know why they're an underdog, but that's a pretty good pick. Seems like a decent pick right there. Cleveland State at home is minus 142. Now we have some road teams where it's close, but these road teams are favored to win even after our home bump of 9%. So they are here for a reason. Wisconsin Green Bay is a little dog, but they're at home against Oak. Oakland's a pretty bad team. I'm surprised at that. They're both bad teams. That's what's going on there. So there's some stuff down at the bottom. Uh, there will be an update tomorrow with more accurate player sets and projections as accurate as they get because um, the stats get updated in the morning and it's late uh, or early, early, earlier in the morning on the 8th. But um, is there anything of interest? I mean, this Quinnipiac game all the way up here is saying Manhattan is just a treocious team. Awful, awful, awful. So minus 148 all the way up here is saying Quinnipiac. Now, every time I call a pick of the game, although yesterday my pick of the game won kind of, but I said it was going to lose. Every time I say something's going to win and, and and say this is the pick of the day, who knows what happens. But that's kind of what the other is saying. But there's only four and five games here, so you, sh you should be a little bit concerned about that. It makes me want to come down here more and say that like this string of home teams at reasonable lines, look at all these reasonable lines here. One, minus 125, minus 148, minus 245, plus 104. North Alabama, Appalachian State, Western Kentucky, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, even Cleveland State here too. These five teams, that's an interesting round robin for these types of bets that I'm talking about. Like for example, if you were to create a bet with all of those teams, let me show you what it might pay with the round robin calculator. Let's do that. Let's prepare what my bet might be tomorrow, which I'll probably bet because I'm on a pretty good run. Um, so I'm saying that what you're looking at, what you care about, is you care about, uh, I'm going to say just home teams. Anything down here is reasonable. That's a minus 205 and produce a good team. So I'm going to stay away from that one. But these ones, all the way up to Toledo and that Quinnipiac game because it's there. Grab all of those games, put them right here. Gives us eight games. Eight. Then you take their money lines because the whole point of this algorithm is supposed to tell you who's going to win, that the team on the left is supposed to win. We're going to put their line there. Assuming you had, for something like this, I would recommend, now sometimes there's a $5 minimum bet at places, but I would recommend less than that because you're going to end up having to bet too much. Let's say the minimum bet is $2, which is also often sometimes. Two, 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 and two. That's enough. That's a $180 bet. Hopefully you can get them for ones. One would be the best. That'd be a $90 bet that can win $2,000 if you hit all eight of these teams, right? I'd consider something like that. If you want to go a little more, um, you know, you can always do something like this, three, two, one, if you want. 
200 here's 134 dollars to win 3800 bucks now obviously if you lose any of these games the, the payout's going to drop dramatically like let's say that that quinnipiac game is a loss all of a sudden it's now only 845 bucks well, what if we also lose wisconsin green bay now all of a sudden we break even basically we lose another game and now we're getting almost nothing. So you really need to go seven and one or better. But I'm picking these games for a reason. That's the point. So I would consider something like this. They're not all probably gonna win eights a lot. Like you, hitting five or six is doable. Hitting seven and eight starts to get really tough. Um, but there's all kinds of things you can do. That's what the round robin calculator shows. And we're 10 minutes in. I'm going to do a football video later tonight for all those people that are interested in the playoff wild card. I haven't done any of those updates. I'll do that. And of course, more payroll work. And that's about it. But it was a good, good, good day. 22 and 3, even though it really, all, well, 21 and 3, I guess, even though it aligned with Vegas almost completely, um, we, we, just, we just had some good win. I mean, I guess... This was a, these two were dogs. Never mind, we beat Vegas. What am I talking about? We beat Vegas. We had Eastern Illinois and USC. USC was a, yeah, was an underdog and they won. And, and so did Idaho State. I'm sorry, we beat the living crap out of Vegas today. What am I talking about? I should give the algorithm the credit when it's due. We hit all the winners that Vegas did. And then we hit the three underdogs that Vegas missed. We hit them all. Long live the algorithm. I should give it the credit it deserves. These were all underdogs, and we picked them off like we were just sniping geese, <laughs> goose, whatever. We were whatever. We were just sniping it, and we just hit the. Do you know how hard that is to do? If you tried to take a list, if you said, "Hey, give this to your buddy," and be like, "Hey, man, I got got 24 games, man. Hey." Can you pick three underdogs that are going to win against Vegas? Get 24 games. Do you know how many people would pick these three games and get them right? If you gave it to 100 people, you'd be lucky if one of those people did that. The algorithm is crushing it. And that's why I'm winning 8 to 1 on my bets. What did I just do? Get rid of all this, right? That's why I'm winning so much. How much did I win? Back it up. There we go. I won this off 80 bucks. I mean, if everyone does this every day, the casinos are going to go out of business. But that's the kind of stuff that the algorithm does. And I, I spend a lot of time trying to convince people that are numbers people how good the algorithm is. And the answer is this kind of stuff hits like every other day. And so if you're doing this, you're just going to crush it. You're just going to crush it. And they're going to take our algorithm and they're going to make this illegal. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. But it's fun to beat Vegas because I love using artificial intelligence and just smarts to beat Vegas. And really what we're doing is we're beating other people because all these lines are, are being generated by people's, um, uh, people's uh, expectations of what they think is gonna happen in the game and people's allegiances to certain teams and stuff. So this is not necessarily who's supposed to win. That's not what the money line is. The money line is who's betting on this team. And so you can always find the holes in it, and that's one of the reasons why the algorithm is so effective. So I hope that was helpful to explain why the algorithm kicks ass, because it does.